for his main course, Paul's gone for new season lamb with a herb and mustard crust served with scallion crushed potatoes. And just seeing it's making me hungry. So that appeals to you? It does. Nice it and lean? It certainly does, yes. So you think I'm, maybe I'm ahead of Richard, do you? <laughs> no, it's not for me to <laughs> pass a verdict. I like them both. They're both absolutely gorgeous. As with Richard's recipe, Paul's chosen meat from a local farmer, but instead of pastry, he's topping it with a layer of herbs and grain mustard. This actually is not complicated, No, it's is it? not no. difficult at all. And I, I think when I, was, when I was doing my menu, it was perhaps one of the things that was bothering me I was maybe thinking, oh, maybe it's not, maybe it's not complex enough. What are you going to serve with it, potatoes? Crushed potatoes with spring onions. And it's really a version of a very, very Northern Irish dish called champ. Now remember, the judges still don't know who's cooked which dish. They're judging the food here, not the chef. Later on, they'll be confronting the chefs themselves. I wonder if the loser will take it on the chin. Back upstairs, Paul's recipe is not going down well with Matthew. Actually, the crust is pretty ghastly. The crust is soggy, it's overpowering, it's acidic, and completely kills any flavour of the lamb. That's because it's made with that horrible grain mustard. But even though the judges seem to have preferred the taste of Richard's main course, there's another factor which could still swing this part of the menu back in Paul's favour. I don't really think of venison as being you know, classic you know, Northern Irish no, meat. No, no. I mean, uh, whereas beef, I do. I'm no expert on Irishness, but I do know which is the best dish. The venison wins, hands down. So Richard's won this course emphatically. A great deal could depend on who wins the last one. OK, on to the dessert. The last leg and... The battle's really on, isn't Can't it? Can't wait. Woo! I'm trailing. It looks, feels like I'm trailing. By complete coincidence, both chefs have gone for rhubarb as a key ingredient of their desserts, but they've treated it in different ways. Paul's regional influence is clear in his choice of buttermilk cream served here with rhubarb and sugared rose petals. This could be a real winner. You'll have to take my word for it, but the scents wafting round this kitchen at the moment are just heavenly. It's very hard to call, isn't it? You're on a bit of a roll, aren't you, Paul? Yeah, I get that feeling you're on a roll, you know what I mean? It's... You think I'm edging ahead, maybe? Well, that's, you that's know... just your chefy insecurity thing happening. <laughs> Both chefs are reaching the critical stage of their desserts now, the bit where it could all go horribly wrong if they don't concentrate. So the final round of this week's contest starts with the judges scrutinising Paul's dessert. That is visually a bit of a stunner. I think this looks fabulous. I really do. But it's, Look at that. but it's panna cotta. It is not panna cotta. No. Well, it is panna cotta. No, it's not panna cotta, but it's made with buttermilk. Panna cotta is made with just full cream. It's panna cotta. Mm. Well, Irish panna cotta. I'll tell you what, it's the best panna cotta you've ever eaten. It is.